Hey guys, how's it going? It's Delroy again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you could subscribe to the channel by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to continue the AR videos. We're going to be focusing on face tracking and I have a really cool example to show you, which is an example where we're going to be doing face changes. I'm going to be using masks to change our faces and also show you the process by doing that. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you the scene that I created for you to toggle basically mask on your face. So the scene that I have right now, it's called face tracking mesh toggle. I also have a face tracking mesh and also a face tracking mesh random, which I showed you previously. So just make sure that you open this one. I'm also going to have this in source control available in GitHub for you to download. And, and basically you can do anything you like with it. So what I want to show you is the hierarchy and what components I have included in the hierarchy. So just like I've done in every AR foundation video, I have a directional light. I have the AR session, also an AR session origin, which is the component that has an AR camera child. And then I have my canvas. In this case, I'm only basically have two different toggles. So you can see that I have a toggle for the face. This one, when we press it, is basically going to change the mask that we have assigned on the face. And this one is going to basically toggle the tracking. So if I'm smiling and the mesh that was generated contains a smile and I were to turn this off, basically the smile is going to stay and then it's not going to keep tracking. So therefore you're going to have basically like a pause on the face tracking. As soon as you click it and toggle it back on, it's going to resume the, the, the face tracking. So that's basically what these two buttons are for. The other components that are basically the core components of this video is the face controller. So the face controller has a couple of components. So of course I have my face tracking toggle, which is basically a reference to the, the tracking toggle button. I also have a swap faces toggle, which is going to allow us to basically change the different mask that I have created for you. And then I have different materials that I have associated with this. So this one is a custom, it's basically a custom object that contains a material and also the name of the material. So as you can see, I can, I can assign a material to this and I can also assign a name. The reason why I do that is because as you're toggling these faces, I want to display the name. So if you look at Unity Black, that, that means that this material is the one that is selected. So let me go ahead and show you how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and go into assets, open C sharp project, and we can, I can walk you through the code. And honestly, there's not a lot of code because a lot of the, the core, basically the core calculations and everything that is happening, it's happening in the XR namespace for AR foundation. So let me just show you what I have in here. So I have a required component flag just to make sure that the AR face manager is included, which it is included. As you can see, I have an AR face manager here. The, the other component that I have is basically my, my face controller, which is going to be the name of the script. I have my two different buttons that I'm referencing because I want to capture when I'm toggling the face tracking, I want to either pause it or continue. And then this one is to basically cycle through all the different materials that we're going to assign to our face. I also have a reference to the AR face manager here. That's why I have this variable. This one is to basically toggle tracking on and off. This one is a counter that basically gets incremented and reset based on where, you know, we, where we are in the mask that we have selected. And then I have a new object that is an array, which is called face material. Let me show you what this is. So this is an array of face materials. That object is very basic. This is the one that I was showing you in the hierarchy. It has a material and it also has a name. And I made it serializable so that we can basically associate it through the inspector. So I created that array through here. I set it to six and I can control it through the inspector, which is what allows me to do that. I also made it serializable, a serializable field. So a few things that I'm doing on the awake, I'm getting a reference to the AR, the AR face manager. I'm also binding my two events. So one for the face tracking toggle and one for the swap faces toggle. And I'm also setting the default material of the, of the prefab to be the first item of the array, which is going to be the face cartoon. 
The, the two methods that do most of the working here are the swap phases and the toggle tracking phases. So let me just show you this one, which is much simpler. So the first thing that I do when somebody presses that button, I do a knot on that variable, which basically toggles it. And then I loop through all the different tracking phases that we have in the scene. And I basically set it to, I turn it off. So the let's say that you have two faces in the scene. You have maybe you're, you know, you're with another person. There is a face attached to the person and also a face attached to you. That means that this is going to have two different faces attached. So we're going to loop through two times. And then we're going to set the face enable to true or false depending depending on the state of the face, face tracking volume. So once we do that, then what I do is I get the component of the, basically the text component that is on the button. And then I determine if I have the AR face manager enabled, then we set it to, basically we set it to off, otherwise we set it to on. So this allows me to know, okay, if we have it set to on, we should be tracking. If we have it set to off, we shouldn't be tracking. So on the other hand, the, the swap faces, it is very similar. Other, other, the, the difference here is that we're using a counter. So what I'm doing is, okay, if the counter is equal to the max, the max is going to be the length of the materials minus one, because this one is not going to be zero index. I'm making sure that we are subtracting one. And then if we hit the max, I'm basically resetting the counter to zero. Otherwise, I increment the, I basically increment the, the swap counter. The reason why I do that is because I want to cycle through the faces. So if you hit that button multiple times, you're going to get different materials assigned to the face. And that's what you'll see in the video that I'm going to show you next. So, but that's basically what the face controller does. It's very minimum, but there's a lot of things that are happening on the, you know, on the core components, which is the AR face manager. So the next thing that I want to show you is some of these components and what, how you can create a new material if you like to do that. So let's say that I wanted to add a new material. Right now I have a face cartoon and, and you'll notice that, you know, by looking at the video, this is, this is going to look very similar to the material that gets assigned to our face. If you look at the face future, you can see that the material, how that looks like. You can also see this face abstract. This one has few eyes, which actually look really cool. And then I also have few of them for the Unity logo. And also, of course, the face tree color. So this is basically the materials. The setup on those are fairly simple. So let's say that you wanted to add a new one. So you could basically copy one of these materials. Let's say that you wanted to copy this one. You can either assign you know, a texture to the albedo. And in this one, I have a normal map because I wanted to get you know a little bit more depth because it actually looks really cool. So if you wanted to copy these, just copy the material and then just change the texture that you have associated. As a rule of thumb, I've been using a texture that has 1024 by 1024 pixels on resolution. That gives me the best look. So let me just show you that texture by, by looking at it. So if I double click it, you can see that if I go to tools and we look at the adjust size, you can see that it's set to 1024 by 1024. I did, uh, I think I did a 126 by 126 and I started to get it, it was way too pixelated. So I went to 1024 by 1024 and it was actually performing really well on my iPhone X. So the other thing that you can do too is you can add, of course, a normal map. And, and this is just a regular, regular material. You know, if you want to go and add metallic materials and textures, you can do that. You can change, of course, you can change some of these values and that's going to resemble when it gets attached to your face. So once you basically duplicate one of those materials that are in here, all you have to do is go into the air session origin, change this to say, let's say that you wanted to add a new one, you will increment it by one, and then you will basically modify the material that you have on the new, on the new element. So, and then basically you search for that, say you wanted to associate it to the face tree color, you can do that, which I don't have assigned to, I don't have a sign here. I could basically say, okay, this one is going to be the tree color material. So I can just say tree color material. And we just, we don't need to include the, the material name in it. But you can see that once I run this, we're going to be able to cycle through the face cartoon, the face future, the abstract, and then all the different Unity logos. And lastly, we're going to look at the tree color. So 
Let me go ahead and build this and we're going to look at it and see how it looks on my phone. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit build, build settings. Make sure that you have the scene that we're looking at selected, which is the one that I have. Then I'm going to go to build and I haven't built it yet. So I'm just going to hit save. It's going to create a new project. And we we'll just give it a few seconds here. And yep, so it's going to build. I'll just basically continue the video as soon as this is completed. All right, guys, so this finished building. And what I'm going to do is now run it on my phone. So I'm just going to hit play. And it should install here. So I'm just going to start the recorder so you can see how it looks. And it should be launching here in just a few seconds. Looks like it's now launching. And there we go. So we can see that my face is getting mapped. And that is the fix, the first texture that I show you, the first material. You can see that I have few, because I'm using a normal map on this texture, on this material, it gives me, you know, more depth. If I swap it, you can kind of see now this is the futuristic one. I can now turn the tracking off. And you can see that I'm moving my mouse, but it's still the face is not moving. If I bring it back on, it gets mapped again. So I'm going to just cycle through all of them so you can see them all. And this is the three color that we added in this video. And there we go. So that's basically everything that I wanted to show you guys. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. Either you're starting out or you're an advanced game developer, they have resources for you. And also find me on Patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also posting early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.